blessings and glory, wisdom, thanksgiving, and honor, power and might belongs to the Lord forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. Blessings and glory, wisdom, thanksgiving, and honor, power and might belongs to the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. Blessings and glory, wisdom, thanksgiving, and honor, power and might belongs to the Lord forever and ever. Amen. The glory, Father, the glory, Son, the glory, Holy Ghost, now and forevermore, now and forevermore, the glory, Father, the glory, Son, the glory, Holy Ghost, now and forevermore. Brethren, I welcome you to today's service in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. May you be blessed even as you watch. May you increase even in faith, even as you hear this message. May God bless you and bless your family. May God bless your generation. May this week be a week to be remembered in your life. May heaven bow down their heads upon you to bless you to transform your life, to heal those that are sick, and to deliver those that are oppressed. May it happen to you according to the will of God in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, today we bring the conclusion of September message, which is abridged. And today we present to you a topic we titled Shepherds or Wolves. We don't know who they are anymore. We don't know what they are doing anymore. But all that we know is that we serve a living God. All that we know is that God is always for us. And if God be for us, nobody can stop us. If God be for us, nobody can devour us. For the Bible says that the devil comes to, to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus has come to give us life and life in abundance. Welcome to abundant life of Christ in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I want to urge us to beware even as we hunt for miracles, even as we go after signs and wonders, even as we seek God to serve him in truth and in spirit, because there are wolves all over the place. There are wolves all over the place, but this does not mean that there are no shepherds from God. There are messengers of the truth of Christ who was crucified on the cross of Calvary, who paid the price for anything that we would need on this earth. That price has been paid and there is nobody that can remove that price tag from whatsoever that we are going to get from God. God has paid for all things and anybody asking you to pay for anything in order to receive from God, it's nothing but a wolf. It's not a shepherd. It's nothing but a messenger of darkness. Praise the Lord. Follow me to the book of Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. And I'm going to read maybe just a few verses. But I pray that you understand what I'm talking about. Matthew chapter 7. I'm reading from verse 15. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravaging wolves. Beware of them, the end time 
is share with us, even as the year is ending, a lot of them will emerge. A lot of Yahoo ministers of whatever they, they, they call themselves, they will emerge and what they are seeking for. Apart from your belongings, apart from robbing you, they are also seeking for your souls to be given to Satan and to make sure that you end up in hell even after the sojourn, even after your sojourn here on earth. But I thank God that the price has already been paid. God himself came down in flesh and suffered all kinds of things so that you and I will make it at the end of the journey. Even from now, we are we have assurance that the price that Jesus paid for us on the cross of Calvary is not in vain. No matter how they try, it is Jesus that is holding you. They will not be able to pluck us from the hand of Jesus, from the hand of God. God is the one who made sure that we are engraved in his palms. And there's nobody that can pluck us out of his palms. No matter what we are passing through, and no matter the the you know the crooked solution they want to prof to prefer so that we will be trapped. God will still set us free. God will still deliver us from their hands. In the name of Jesus, Christ of Nazareth, that place where you are stuck today, because of principle precepts upon precepts, because of principles of getting this and getting that, which is not in line with the word of God. And you are trapped there, hoping that it is going to be well. That what the man or what the woman has said will eventually come to pass. Yet, it is a game for them to be milking from you. Not only sapping what you have physically, but they are sapping the strength of God in you. Because as time goes on, you no longer believe that God will answer prayers. Because you have fasted, because you have given, because you have done all kinds of things, prayed. And yet there is no answer. The reason is that no man answers prayers. It is only God that answers prayers. And the Bible said, My people pray and not receive. Because they pray amiss. They pray amiss. Amiss meaning that you cannot stay in the wrong place and fire your servo of prayer. Fire your projectile of prayer. And then you think it will hit the target. It may not hit the target because you are in the wrong place and you are with the wrong people. Praise the Lord. And Jesus is that monition us in the book of Matthew chapter 7, verse 15. He said that we should be where we should be where of false prophets, false prophets, Yahoo prophets. Because they are everywhere now, ravaging the earth, ravaging the entire world. But men cannot discern, because we are greedy in nature, and those greedy ones will like to go into a Ponzi game, a Ponzi business with false prophets. And what they are looking for is not only your money, they are also looking for your soul. That is the worst of it all. After you, they have taking your money, after they have taken what belongs to you, they will also hand you over to Satan. That will not happen. And we have to bring warning from our Lord Jesus Christ this morning that we should be aware of these guys. They come to you in sheep's clothing. They wear all kinds of things to show or to deceive us that they are men of God that they are pastors, that they are imams, that they are genuine Christians. But let me tell you, you have to look and look properly to be able to understand that there is something that is under the veil. There is something that is covered with the veil. You are going to ask God and God will answer you. Open the veil, tear the veil, let me know what is inside. And God will open your eyes and you will see what is inside. It is only when you see that you believe. You know, in this world, seeing is believing. You see? So, because you are still in this world, because you are still carnal, God still needs to go much deeper to open your eyes so that you can see. 
that is not the way you think. It is not the way they are dressed. It is not the way they speak. There is something hidden in their words. And so beware of these guys. They are hunters of souls. They hunt for souls. While you hunt for God, they are looking for souls. Be careful. But I know that God will save you. I know that God will save us. Because they are the ones orchestrating the hardship in this world that will make us to run helter scatter. But you know, because many of us who are called Christians, many of us who are already trapped, they have gone to the negative world. They can go to any place without minding. They can go to the Sangomas, the native doctors, the Pamis, and all sorts of things. Why they still come to the church? And that is why they don't even care. Or they don't even want to know whether the man who is before them is a true shepherd or a wolf in sheep's clothing. But I pray that the Spirit of God will locate us. I pray that the Spirit of God will locate you to be able to take you out of their dungeons, to be able to take you out of their traps if you are already trapped. Hallelujah. Verse 16, I read, you shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of tassels? By their fruits you shall know them. As you look to understand what is going on, search their fruits. Are their fruits the fruits of the Spirit of God or the fruits of mammon? Because many of us are there to get wealth, get wealth, get rich so quickly. So that we will be able to show off. After all, December is here with us. A few hundred of days, hundreds of days will be there. Just about 100 and something days will be there. And then you want to show off. And then you don't care whether they are taking your soul or not. Because I have even seen people say, I am ready. I am ready to surrender somebody that, be that is beloved to me. So that I can make this wealth. If they can do that, they can still remain in the church and do the same thing. There are still so many of them in the church. It's not only the shepherds that are turning into wolves. Members are much more of wolves than we can even think of. When you see them dress and, uh, you know, to burn themselves as if they are, you know, assistant angels that have come <laughs> from heaven. You never knew that they have a hidden agenda. Unveil what is inside, and you know that this person is not even a brother. He's not even a brother. He's not even part of the church, but has come to devour, has come to stop men from seeing the face of God. But I pray that you will see the face of God. By the illumination of Christ, in the presence of God, you will be able to understand the fruits that they are releasing to the public or they are sharing to people. By their fruits, you shall know them. Can, can, can men gather grapes of thorns or figs of tassels? Even so, every good tree bringeth out forth good fruit. But a corrupt tree Brings forth evil tree. Corrupt tree. False prophets. They bring out false miracles. Fake miracles everywhere. Arranged miracles everywhere. Fake testimonies. Once you begin to hear things that you don't understand, you have the right to ask God questions. Is this real or not? You have to ask God. Don't say that you have, that God will not answer you because you are not righteous. Don't even condemn yourself. Because the righteousness which we enjoy today is not our own righteousness. It is the righteousness of Christ who went to the cross to pay the price and give us his own righteousness. It is from that righteousness that we are enjoying everything we are enjoying under heavens. Because under the heavens, there is no one that is righteous. We only press to be. 
But along the line, you see yourself doing what you don't want to do. And God will only help you to take you further out of those things that will bring sin into your life. Nobody can claim, I am, I am, I am, I am righteous. I am righteous. I, am, I have no spots. I am holy. That's what many of them are doing today. That is intimidating people to believing that because they are not the way the person is, you know, the, 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 the person is presenting it, then they are, they, are, they are now sinners. And so they cannot change. It's not so. God has not tagged you as a sinner. Yes, before the coming of Christ, before you accepted Jesus Christ, that tag may be on you. But immediately you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, that tag is removed. Because you are not connected to the price that was paid on the cross of Calvary. Do not allow anybody to intimidate you. Do not allow anybody to harass you to believe that you are a sinner. Once you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, you are connected, especially if it is with your whole heart. If it is your, with your whole heart. But if it is in deception, then you need to repent and repent and repent again. Praise the Lord. I don't know why I'm stretching it, but I know that there are many people that have condemned themselves and they have said they can't be righteous anymore. Our righteousness is not by our works. Our righteousness is by the price that was paid on the cross of Calvary. God bless you. Share this message. Subscribe to this channel. Comment. And it shall be well with you. God bless you and bless you real.